Okay, in this class we are going to look at growth of functions for measuring complexity of computer algorithms. But before we do that, let's look at how computers increase in size. So we started with a Babbage machine and then like a couple of hundred years back, then we had adding machines, mechanical uh, accumulators for accountants from 1930s and then we had a pocket calendar in 1970s and then finally in 1990s we got the supercomputers this is a cray supercomputer and in that by 2000 we had the data center with millions of pieces in huge factories and they all connected by network and this is how computers have been increasing in capacity and there's one more increase in the density of computer uh, transistors in a computer so Gordon Moore of Intel basically speculated that uh, computer the number of transistors in per square inch has been doubling every year since 1970s and then here you can see the memory is the red one is the memory is going up doubling and now we have like 16 gig memory and the date uh, and the microprocessor also has been increasing if you see the yellow line we started with 8080 in 1970s and then we had the 286, 386, 406 Pentium processor in 1995 and then Pentiums and then Itanium and all the later larger in PCs came along so computers have been increasing in size and the capacity has been increasing and there's another picture uh, transistor counts from 1971 to 2011 and Moore's law so 8088 and 4886 in Pentium Opteron and transistor card is basically going up exponentially on this side with linear time. So the question is how do we measure algorithms if computers are getting faster how do we still do you have a measurement for speed of algorithms. So how do we measure how long a computer takes it what if the computer is doing other thing what if we get a faster computer. So Windows runs at a different speed than a Linux or the same machine. So we need to abstract things. So first thing we need to do is what is a single step of a computer. So basically assignment, comparison, addition and we don't really care how many machine instructions it translates into but it has to be a single step and this will let us define our pseudo code. So we'll look at that pseudo code later on and then we can compare the number of steps of a algorithm and compare different kinds of algorithms and it doesn't matter what kind of computer you use a efficient algorithm will on a slow computer will always beat a inefficient algorithm on a fast computer so the speed of the, of the computer will be irrelevant when the complexity algorithm will be considered so in this course we'll only be concentrating on the complexity of the algorithm and it doesn't matter what kind of computer you execute on and we'll see how we measure it. First thing we need to do is we need to worry about asymptotic. What does asymptotic mean? Asymptotic means to see how the algorithm behaves as the input size gets larger and larger. N goes to infinity. What uh, what does the function look like? And why do we need that? Because initially there may be setup and a time dominated by some setup and a tear up time, which will go vanish as we get the n gets larger and then we use the complexity of order of the algorithm we'll see that later on and then we'll measure the time and the space complexity of algorithms so let's look at what kind of functions we have so order 1 is 1 order log n is basically the number of zeros in the input n is basically n itself the size of n n log n is basically n into number of zeros n square for at n equal to 1000 is a million n cube is a billion and 4 is a trillion and a polynomial is for a thousand is a really large number and then 2 raised to n is 2 raised to thousand is a really huge number is actually 10 to the power 301 and factorial is still larger number 10 followed by 2568 zeros n raised to n is still larger number and so we will basically be concentrating on the uh, complexity in this range So these are called constant time. This is called log time. This is linear algorithms. N log n, where most of the sorting will be done. Then we have polynomial algorithms. 
then we are exponential b raised to n for some constant b and factorial is basically when it do uh, permutation and combinations for puzzles so let's see how these functions grow so you can see uh, this n square is out here yellow n log n all these are very uh, going, growing very very slowly n log n n square and then we have these things growing very fast n cube 2 raised to n so let's see uh, at some point like around 1000 these functions go out of hand like n cube and 2 raised to n these are going too fast for us to manage so let's see exponential versus polynomial time so there's a constant function log n n n log n n square 2 raised to n and n factorial and then we compare it on a plot it on a logarithmic scale so it's doubling every at every notch and this is the input size is linearly going one by one up and this is how we will see it so basically these are manageable at this point and then eventually these functions are ones we cannot handle where the input will be uh, the function will be going too fast with the input so given a problem size of n the algorithm runs in order fn time and f order fn is the upper bound and similarly we have big omega which is a lower bound and theta which is equal to the time uh, 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 respect to some constant factors okay so what is polynomial time fn is polynomial if it's a constant linear if it's n n square it is quadratic n raised to k is polynomial and exponential if it's 2 raised to n n factorial n raised to n so let's see we plot them n n square n raised to 10 2 raised to n n factorial for n 1 10 100 thousand we can see that these are small numbers we can actually deal with it but at this point these these functions are basically unmanageable so for n equal to input if input is size 100 we can actually uh, compute any of these algorithms they're too large for uh, uh, algorithm to actually finish so here is another table which shows given the n and how log n grows and n n log n n square n cube 2 raised to n so if n is equal to 8 suppose and a computer takes 4 nanosecond uh, uh, log n algorithm takes 4 nanosecond n will take 0 0.02 microsecond uh, n log n takes 0 0.06 microsecond and similarly n square takes 0.2 microsecond and 2 raised to n takes 60 65 microseconds so this is all manageable but as you increase n and double n like around 128 log n is really fast okay log n doesn't grow at all for any of these numbers n is growing it's all in the computable range and but at this point you'll see that it, it uh, 2 raised to n goes into at 128 uh, even at 64 2 raised to n takes 5 centuries so this is centuries and this takes hours 3 days so n is 65,000 and n cube will take 3 days and this is all computable and this is not computable basically when it takes years and centuries so you can see most of the exponential part is not computable n cube also polynomial also is hard when n is large so let's look at some good common time complexities okay this is taken from wikipedia okay so constant time is basically for example uh, if an integer is odd or even you can just look at the last bit to decide it, uh, it is order. it takes constant time you don't even have to look at the whole number and there's a function called the inverse Ackermann function which we'll look at later which is a slowest growing function after constant time and it's used for the this joint set operation in the union fine and iterated log we look at another function for distributed coloring of cycles it also grows log star n we'll see that later on and log log n okay these are really slow functions then we'll see faster and faster functions log time is basically for binary research when you do binary research or dictionary research search in the dictionary you can just do it in log n time poly log is basically polynomial of the log and fractional power is also the n uh, square root and stuff they're searching in a kd tree 
uh, these are examples of algorithms that we'll sometime we'll look at later linear time is basically order n so finding a smallest element in a unsorted array it takes linear time it looks through all the elements there's a n log star n basically this is from computational geometry Seidel's polygon triangulation then n log n this is the comparison for comparison and n square is basically bubble sort the inefficient sorting methods and cubic time n cube is taken by name matrix multiplication polynomial time is basically taken for example for karma of a linear program we'll look at that later on and they are quasi polynomial time and let's see more of them sub exponential is basically just below exponential okay we'll not look at out here anything out here sub exponential times another definition is for integer factorization and graph isomorphism these are really hard problems we'll just refer to them in the complexity class in the end exponential time is basically to cover all combinations like the traveling salesman tsp problem or dynamic pro uh, using dynamic programming factorial time and factorial is basically brute force tsp problem takes factorial time and then double exponential time is also there 2 raised to 2 raised to n for Pressburger arithmetic is a kind of a logic using plus and it takes 2 raised to 2 raised to n with a very high complexity okay we will not it just we can't solve any problem at that point so complexity has three measures one is the average case this is the average case then the average number of steps taken for any input of size n the best case is the fastest you can run the minimum steps you can do solve it and worst cases so basically the you know, input is really badly behaved how many time maximum number of time you will take so given any input it should the time for size 4 it should take from here to here average will take out here worst case will take so much more time best case it will take this much time minimal ok so let's look at an example of a really difficult problem so factoring a composite number is an exponential uh, time problem is to order 2 raised to n where n is the number of bits in in the number or number of digits also you can say into 3 okay would give you the binary bits so for example if, if we had a 2048 bit uh, uh, number for uh, RSA key it would take around 10 raised to 600 steps to factor it which is a really huge number so basically factoring is hard and it can't be done with using brute force so uh, later on we look at NP complete problems NP complete problems are saying that like yes I can't solve it but nobody else can solve these problem they are hard problems and we don't have any solution ok we'll look at them later on more of these NP complete problems whole chapter on that and then sometimes hard problems are easy to solve in practice for example the simplex uh, algorithm uh, it can take exponential steps in worst case but in practice usually finishes very quickly so the average case is low but the worst case can be exponential and then Karmakas al algorithm comes around uh, solves the problem by making sure even in worst case it is polynomial time not exponential and hard problems can actually be solved using approximation algorithm which are like which give approximate answer it's not really the best but they give a bound okay saying uh, like 0.5 times the best or whatever and they run faster so what are these hard problems and knapsack and a bin packing are NP complete problems. What does that mean? NP complete means there are a bunch of problems which are equally hard, and you got all these weights, different numbers, and you have to pack it in a fixed capacity. What's the maximum you can pack into this box? And integer sizes. So it's not like you can break a break into half. And packing this is really a problem of, of you cannot really solve except by brute force it's called it's one of the NP complete problems we'll look at later on and what is the use of these things let's look at its use so you have a drill and you want to make a circuit board using a robot like a millions of these boards and you want to move it as quickly as possible and the only way to do it is to apply the traveling salesman problem visit every point and you to go around quickly and drill holes so you have to apply the TSP algorithm why is it important because you'll be doing it a million times the same procedure so if you can find a good way of moving around here you can save time if you're doing it every day same thing as a circuit board circuit board soldering robot it has to solder all these points and as you move around and the moving takes a lot of time so 
if you can do it efficiently the algorithm has to run once so maybe you spend more time uh, finding optimal route and then you can use it forever same thing for airline routing or railway routing once you find an optimal route you can run it really fast you can run it forever so what is beyond uh, polynomial so polynomial is basically any expression n raised to c where c is a constant and that's called a polynomial time function so lot, lots of algorithms we see will be polyno polynomial time algorithms and they run and we can actually run them quickly and exponentials are non-polynomial they, they basically 2 raised to n, n factorial n raised to n, these are really hard and beyond that is elementary functions any combination of n plus multiply, divide, exponential, log, n factorial these are elementary and they are non-elementary functions like Ackerman and Busy Beaver they grow really fast and we'll see example of it. They use in theory, but not in practice. We'll not see them. So let's look at the Ackermann function. It's very simple to define. Ackermann of zero n is n plus one. Ackermann m n is basically Ackermann of m minus one one. So you take out one from here, and then computer recursively call Ackermann again. And Ackermann of m n is basically m minus one Ackermann of m n minus one. So basically double recursion out here. This is a Haskell code. So let's see how m is here and n is here how it grows so it's very well weird when m is 0 m is 1 is okay uh, m is 2 is okay till here m is 3 it starts going exponential out here and when m is 4 is basically a tower of 2's and all these are basically out of the range of a computer so you can see it grows very fast for m m is the basically how many times is it iterated so let's see so and the uh, and inverse of that would be the the slowest growing function it's not exactly the inverse but it's as slow as Ackermann is fast and uh, union fine algorithm that we'll look at later is order m into uh, alpha n plus n where n is the number of elements in the set for union fine m is the total number of unions and fine operations performed so basically it, it, it grows very very slowly and here is the the inverse Ackermann function is basically growing very slowly it grows like log n log n and then for alpha 1 2 3 4 and then as n is growing you can see how it's growing slowly you won't be actually computing much of it but it's still giving a idea of how slow a function can grow okay so after now that we know this you need to install some software to actually be able to run the algorithms that will be write code for it later on so at this point you should install the following software you should need for windows you need to install G sigwin with gcc or g++ and x windows and it works the default and then you need code blocks it is a basically gui for gcc and g++ and python 2.7 you can also install a later python but then the code that we have out here is developed for python 2.7 and then for java we'll use open jdk it's the free version of java jdk without the 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 servers and uh, ie hookups into for windows from oracle java and linux you probably just need to install code blocks everything else should be on your machine so let's see what are the characters of each language for this is a joke but python is basically you, you just import a library in java you have two pages of like code and still you have no idea what it's saying okay and in c++ basically you have like 400 copies of the same object and unix shell basically you are stuck with permissions and stuff like that assembly we'll look at that later c latex html you can look at all these things jokes is from somewhere in the web it's a basically the characteristic of different languages but we'll mostly concentrating on c java python c plus plus latex will need for writing your papers html maybe for javascript assembly won't be using unix shell will need all the time for moving things around or editing code so homework could be write the Ackerman function and C, Python, and Java, and then print it from 0 to 3 m and n equal to 0 to 4. Also, if your code compiles, that's not enough, it should actually work properly. Okay, 
and just because in college doesn't mean that you're done when your code compiles okay that's a joke and here's the solutions okay for python and c and java but you probably can write it it's probably straightforward recursion so the question we have which which is higher complexity n factorial or e raised to n n n log n or n raised to 1.5 that's n into square root of n and then third one is log n or square root of n and then we have is n log n or order n n log n or log n raised to square you need to understand these to decide to understand complexity better and we'll look at more of log n and n in the next chapter answers are here n factorial is uh, faster than e raised to x and in this case it is n into n into square root of n so this is faster square root of n is bigger than log n and n log n is bigger than n and n log n is bigger than uh, log n into log n and the answers are basically you can find them on google or wherever at this place log n is less than square root of x for log is less than square root of x for large x and order of log n is same as order of square root of n okay so that's about it for now